Hydrotherapy, Theory and Practice, Part 10. As you navigate any health challenge, it's always recommended that you partner with a medical practitioner that shares your philosophy of the care of the human body, both in health and disease. The information shared here is just another uh, tool in your toolbox that can help you in returning to health if sick and maintaining your good health if well. Don't take anything uh, on blind acceptance, but uh, do your due diligence as you investigate anything before applying any treatment or protocol. <clears throat> in January of 1903, the Newark Advocate posted a quote by Thomas Edison. The doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. Very forward-thinking thought for that time and day and age, but even prior to In 1885, in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, we're told that there is only one way that heaven approves of practicing the healing art, <clears throat> using the simple agencies of nature. These are God's remedies that don't tax or debilitate the system. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, and purity of life, and a firm trust in God are the remedies. It takes skillful work to use them that people don't appreciate anymore because they're used to having such a a quick pharmaceutical approach and reliance upon a quick fix. But the use of God's remedies are inexpensive, freely available, and don't tax either the body or the pocketbook. 3 John 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. It's very important that we take care of the health of our soul as well as the health of our body because they're in explicably tied together. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body the living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It's not an unreasonable thing to ask of us, but when we're not thinking about <clears throat> the things that we need to do to make ourselves a living sacrifice, then we can easily get off track. We don't want to be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So right here is a statement of what the will of God is. And if you're seeking God's will, this is a good place to start. In the ministry of healing, it's stated that the knowledge that man is to be a temple for God, a habitation for the revealing of his glory, that is, his character, should be the highest incentive to the care and development of our physical powers. So we're created by our Creator, and the study of our human body, our human frame, is to be a part of our daily life, understanding its needs and acting our part in preserving it from harm and defilement. Today we're going to start looking at some of the modalities of applying the hydrotherapy techniques that we've been looking at a lot of the background on. So to start with, we're looking at localized cold. And the application here is used to reduce blood flow to a limb. It can sometimes be utilized as a proximal compress. <clears throat> and the first localized cold application is the cold compress. Uh, it's a local application, say a limb, or in this case the forehead, where a cold cloth, cotton towel, is wrung out, and then that wrung out towel from cold water, could be ice water, is then applied to the area of, of interest, whether that be the forehead or an area that has been uh, traumatized in some way. So some of the benefits and functions of using uh, this application is it aids in fever reduction, uh, it can help reduce the swelling and pain associated with sprains, it can also help with sinus congestion relief uh, and congestion headaches, and combine this with a hot foot bath. So generally we think of heat as being a vasodilator and being able to open things up and move blood away <clears throat> But by combining a cold application to the head and a hot application to the foot, 
It draws the congestion away from the area of the head, the sinuses, down towards the feet and helps to get the blood moving around the body. So using the cold in conjunction with the hot foot bath. Also, it can help reduce tachycardia. So if the heartbeat is over 100 beats per minute at rest, that's tachycardia for sure. And it can help to bring that back down by applying it over the chest area, over the heart. So how do you do this, the application? So you use toweling to protect the bedding and the clothing from water that may come from the wrung out towel. Remember, it's not a sopping wet towel, but one that's been wrung out. <clears throat> Fold the towel. Depending on what the size of this being treated, it could be a hand towel or a bath towel or a face cloth. Uh, dip that in cold water and wring it out so it's not dripping. You could also just uh, put that onto a block of ice, a, a damp rag <clears throat> on a block of ice, and let that do the cooling in between treatments. So you're going to be applying it to the affected area and changing that compress uh, every one to five minutes. You don't want it to be warming up. <clears throat> so the thicker the mat, mat of of cloth, the longer it's going to stay cold once it's wrung out or once it's been cooled down by the ice block. Now thinking about the ice block treatment, there could be the possibility of the rag or cloth uh, adhering to that ice block. So most people don't have a right, an ice block readily available, so probably ice water or cold water would be the most expedient uh, form of doing that. So using the cold compresses, you can use it on the head for a headache or sinus congestion around the neck, uh, over the heart or lungs, so that's for respiration rates, the abdomen, especially in cases of typhoid fever, up and down the spine, so remember hydrotherapy can be used as a reflex point to aid areas distant from the area of application. Uh, the forehead compress, if you're using it for a headache, you want to press it down firmly over the temporal arteries. You can see where those temporal arteries run, coming up from the ear area and then on up and radiating over the forehead. <clears throat> and uh, the cold will cause them to, to vasoconstrict and be less uh, painful. So if the cold compress is left too long without changing it, it can end up becoming a heating compress. And you don't want that if you're actually using the cold and seeking the cold leaving it too long between the alternating changes and it will end up causing the body to have a warming effect as opposed to a cooling effect. So frequent changes are critical to making the cold compress uh, work effectively. An ice pack, number two. So it actually uses ice as opposed to using just cold water and it applies uh, that as a compress. It has very powerful cold effects. More, more so than wrung out claws, even if they're dipped in ice water. So this person here has their wrist packed uh, in ice there. The one thing here different from the procedure is that it's just directly to the skin. Probably better not to do it directly to the skin uh, because you don't want it to freeze or, or damage the tissues. So it can be used over the heart or chest to slow heart rate again, so for tachycardia can be useful for sprains and torn ligaments to help reduce the edema and the swelling associated with that. Uh, acute inflammation of joints, whatever source it might be, uh, can be used in rheumatic fever to help bring the fever down. Acute infectious arthritis, so bacterial basis is typically how that uh, is instigated. Bursitis, so the bursa are the fluid-filled sacs that, that lie beneath tendons that go over bones from muscles and just help to reduce friction. Sometimes those can become inflamed, have a bacterial challenge associated with them, and become painful and restrict movement. So the cold application can help reduce the pain. It can also reduce the metabolism of the bacteria that may be present. Also burns. Applying ice directly to the burns with a cloth inter inter interspersed between a damp cloth. Uh, basically, in a burn situation, running under cold water, putting ice on it, you're basically helping to reverse the direction of the burn uh, by stopping the, the cooking of the tissue. Because <clears throat> as long as it stays hot, it's going to continue to damage the tissue. So getting it cold as quick as possible. Running it under cold water for a protracted period of time or on ice 
uh, is you can actually greatly reduce the damage associated with the burn. So in the clinical setting, it's been used to mitigate the body temperature metabolism rises and falls according uh, associated with, with thyroid removal, uh, associated with Graves' disease. So exo, exothalamic goiter, essentially. So they have had some thyroid issues and Graves' disease has ensued and they removed it. Uh, and then your thyroid is actually one of the things that is very important for controlling your metabolism. <clears throat> and it can kind of get out of the kilter when the, when the thyroid is removed. So applying the ice pack. So you can use snow or pound or crush ice. If you had like a, a hammer or an ice grinder or even a shaved ice machine, uh, it's, probably not everybody has a shaved ice machine around, but I remember having an ice grinder as a kid, just a wall mounted thing. And many people have ice machines in their houses where they can have crushed ice. So snow sized bits or small, small bits of ice are the preferred size rather than cubes. Uh, so wrap the area of treatment with flannel. So basically, you can see the person here has, has an ace bandage. That, that works as well. In this case, it's around a, a swollen uh, ankle area. It prevents freezing and tissue damage during the process. You pack that shavings to a one inch thickness over the area. So you can see that's been done here with cubes, but the, the smaller shaved ice or snow sized flakes is gonna increase the surface area and pack in more closely around it. And then wrap flannel cloth over the area and secure it in place with, with pins. <clears throat> or you can use another method because what you want to be able to do is interrupt that pack frequently to prevent frostbite or freezing. You can rub the snow or ice or tissues and apply hot fomentations uh, for a localized heating type of reaction. The third modality is using the ice cravat, uh, similar to an ice pack. You can use snow or ice laid in a towel and then wrap around the area versus packed around the area and then covering it. Uh, the cravat is easier to work with. It can be used as an ice collar. It can be used on the shoulders, the ankles, or the elbow or knee um, and function as a proximal application, so close to the core of the body. It causes vasoconstriction of blood vessels and helps to reduce uh, blood flow. The, this is a commercially made application or device that's shown here. There are lots of different ice pack uh, modalities that are available commercially now, but you can do this simply with shaved ice uh, or snow or crushed ice if you have that available. So it can benefit in cases of fever and congestive headaches again, acute epidemic meningitis. So that's an inflammatory basis of the brain lining. Uh, sunstroke, uh, whenever prolonged sweating treatments are given. So in following them, kind of intermingling, intermingling with those. Uh, it causes vasoconstriction and basically slows blood from entering the damaged tissue and reduces edema. And that's a good thing. You can see the discoloration and bruising associated with a swollen ankle. This ankle looks a little swollen, but not as swollen as it could be if it was left unchecked with ice. So vasodilation, vasoconstriction, all our blood vessels have a basic tone to them, and there's small muscles around them <clears throat> that can expand the size of an artery and constrict the size of an artery based on need of blood or uh, need to radiate heat from the body in the case of surface vessels like at the skin surface and sweating. So it helps to reduce the amount of bruising that happens from a, a strain or fracture uh, can also be useful in things like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, infectious arthritis, again, rheumatic fever, and basic joint inflammation. So how do you apply that? So crush the ice and place it in a towel. So lay that towel out like the person is doing with this ice pack, but instead use ice, but an ice pack would work as well. Fold the towel to about three inches in width, and that's, uh, or the size that is necessary for the application. Uh, and place it around the neck if that's the area of treatment. If another place is being treated like an ankle, you place it uh, in that area. You see this athlete here is attempting to cool down on a hot day during an athletic event using an ice towel, ice filled towel around their neck and that gives an overall kind of cooling effect to the entire body. So you can also apply a cold compress to the head in addition to increase the, the cooling effect. If used in other places, you can use flannel, uh, 12 by 12 towel, 
or flannel for the shoulders and knee, and an eight by nine inch for uh, elbows or ankles. And that's using the cravat. So you can review this, uh, these modalities at preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com and look for future coverage of different hydrotherapy applications and review previous presentations.